Hi everyone, I'm Lou Collins and today I'd like to show you my five steps for creating the perfect greeting card. Now I use this method whenever I'm stuck in a rut, whenever I've lost my mojo and I don't really have a starting point or I'm just completely overwhelmed with the amount of craft items that I have in my room and what do I use? So whether you're a beginner or an experienced card maker, hopefully you're going to find this useful. Now today I'm going to be making two cards simultaneously to show you how the method can be applied to whatever kind of style that you use when you're crafting. The products that I'm going to be using are mostly my own textures brand and I'll link those all down below and anything else you'll also find links down there for too. Now throughout the five steps, three things that I am constantly thinking about are contrast, dimension and balance and I'm going to be referring to those a lot to help you create the ideal and perfect card. If you enjoy videos like this I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up on the video, drop me a comment and let me know what helps you out the most and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Now let's get on with it. So the first step in making any card is going to be choosing either your theme or your focal point. This is usually an embellishment or a topper and it kind of sets the scene for the whole card. It will be the thing that your eye is drawn to first and most and that's usually what you then base everything else off. So our focal point is the first thing to think of and for me, for my two cards, I have chosen to go with this butterfly half for one and this rainbow leaf sprig for another card. Now sometimes this focal point will determine step two, sometimes not. Once you've chosen your focal point you can then go on and choose your card base but you don't want your focal point to be more than a third of the card base. For example with this butterfly I'm going to go with this DL card base and this is going to sit on the side, I can do it down the bottom, I can do it down the top, but essentially that is not going to take up any more than one third of my card base. Let me show you with this one. So I'm going to use a craft card base and this is going to be a smaller, an A6 in the UK or an A2 size if you're in the US. Again, overall this isn't actually using any more than a third of the entire space your eyes drawn into it still you've got lots of space around it that space around is the white space albeit much less in that one so once you've got your focal point and then you've determined what your card size is going to be we can move on to the second point and this is our colors now choosing your colours and your colour scheme, for you it may be that this is the first step. This is where you start with a lovely colour combination and go with. That's kind of what I did with this one. I knew I wanted to use a rainbow of cool colours here and that's how I inked up my, my sprig before I die cut it. With this one, my colours have actually come from another element that I'm going to use in the card in the background, and that's some washi sheets. I've got patterned washi sheets that I knew I really wanted to use here. So I've inked my butterfly before die cutting it using those colours. Now, once you've got your colour scheme, you can then go ahead and you can choose things like your embellishments, things like your mats and layers, your colours for that. So it's really important to get your colour or your colour scheme, colour combination nailed down near the beginning. And don't forget, of course, that can vary. You can go ahead and change this as you work through your card. Now, it's important at this stage for me to mention that you do need to keep in mind that you need an A, B, C, D throughout your card. This refers to a balance, a contrast and a dimension within the card somewhere, within the finished piece. So bear this in mind and I will talk through examples of this as I go through but just keep remembering A, B, C, D. So a contrast here is going to be within our colours. So I've definitely got the contrast with the bright and the neutral background with this card. With this one it's going to be a little more difficult so we're going to come to the contrast a little bit later on. The balance is going to be with that white space so for this one everything's going to be central which tends to make everything balanced anyway. With this one here the balance is going to be a little bit harder but I'll talk through that as we construct the card. As for a dimension, now that's usually just adding an alternative layer to your card if you're happy not to do simply flat cards and usually this will simply be for me by adhering something with some foam. It's as simple as that. 
Now step number three is your background. So forgetting for the moment our focal point and going to the background of our cards. Now I tend to use a card base and then a panel that is matching so I can do this texture, this pattern, this colour and if it goes wrong I've not ruined a card base but I tend to cut these just ever so slightly smaller than the card base as you can see there and there and if I'm going to be working with lots of mediums I try to make sure particularly with white cardstock that this is from a cardstock that can hold wet mediums like for example watercolour card. Now the background should never overpower the foreground. So the foreground, which is going to be your focal point, shouldn't be any less bright or any less bold than your background. So for this reason, I tend to add texture in here to give it a little something without disturbing the focal point. And this, in nine times out of 10, this is going to be with an embossing folder or some very light, very faint stamping, something like that in the background. For both of these, I'm going to use an embossing folder, but I am going to use different ones. For the craft card stock, I'm going to use this floral one from my Spring Awakening collection. And for the DL card, I'm going to use this 3D hexagon background. And this is because it's a DL embossing folder. So that's going to give me the space to emboss that in one panel. So there's the embossed craft card stock. Now I've got the option of using either side. This is, seems to be a much bolder side, but as I say, I don't really want the background taking anything away from the focal point. So I'm probably going to flip this over and use the paler side with the finer detail that's embossed into it. And that's not going to subtract attention as much from the focal point there. See, that is just a beautiful texture that adds a little something. Now, of course, this is going to be adhered down flat. Now for the white panel, I do want to add the texture, but I'm also going to add some more colour into the background before I emboss. So for this one, I'm thinking about my background, I'm thinking about my colours and my contrast, and I think I'm going to add some beautiful washi sheets. These are from my Textures Spring Awakening collection. They are gorgeous spring florals in pastel colours. I think I'm just going to add a floral like so on the card there and I can wrap that round just to give that a really neat edge and when I'm talking about balance bear in mind my flower my butterfly here is going to be going over the top here I'm going to add the tiniest little bit of floral also to this bottom corner so I've got a number of different options here with all the washi sheets designs but I think I'm going to go with this simple small rose spray here with just little rose buds this is working with that balance so I'm just bringing a tiny little bit of the design down to the rest of the card this is going to help your eye travel around the card as well this isn't necessary if you've got a center focal point but because my focal point here isn't going to be central, this is what I'm doing here. Now, it may be that you're thinking, well, actually, now you're losing the butterfly. It's kind of falling into the flowers, and how are you going to keep that separate? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add one more flower because I can see a little space there where the stems are, where I think I'd like a bit of pink. But essentially what I'm going to do is add some contrast now remembering the a b c d so a contrast on the page this is where another piece of die cut comes in and this was already planned when i decided on my color scheme and it's a dark gray butterfly cut the same way so a nice dark neutral color to sit underneath and look how that now pops. It makes a huge difference. I've still got my beautiful pastel colors. I haven't taken away from that, but I've now got my contrast on my page or on my card. So now I've got my background color added to this panel. I'm going to run it through with the embossing folder to add the additional texture. If you've already got pattern on your card, you don't have to add texture with an embossing folder or something similar. This is just something I like to do and it kind of embeds that pattern in as well. Now let's take a look at the beautiful background. Absolutely stunning. 
Now the fourth step is frame or balance and I like to do this here but I also like to check back at this stage at the end as well. So very often I will add a frame or I'll try to balance my cards. Now these are two completely different things. Now I've already spoken about the balance on this card and I don't feel like I need a frame with this one simply because I've got the edge of the embossing framing the card, bringing it in and I've got the balance by having the little bit of floral down the bottom here as well. So I'm happy that I can go ahead and I can glue all of this down. If I did want to add a simple frame, I would use something like two nesting dies in the correct shape. This is a square, but as an example, I would add two nesting dies together through the machine and I would cut myself out a nice fine frame that could sit over the top here. And I'd usually add that with some dimension and I would then add that with foam just to lift it up and very often in the same colour as the card base. So to ensure I've got that contrast I'm gluing my butterfly together with the slightest offset, only a millimetre or two to give that grey drop shadow. This also gives the look then of dimension so I don't need to think about actually having foam on my card. This is great if you prefer to have a completely flat card, for example if you want to post it. Now to add more dimension without actually adding foam, I'm just going to be gluing my butterfly down there by the body but not the wings so we get a little bit of lift there. So let's recap this one so far. I've got my focal point, I've chosen my colours and I've got contrast in there with those colours. I've got background texture. I don't need to add a frame but I have balanced the card and I can move on to the last step with this one in a moment. Now for this card I've got my focal point. I've stuck my background down which is textured. Obviously my colours were chosen by the fact I knew I wanted to use rainbow colours so everything else is going to be neutral to create the contrast. I do need to think about dimension with this one though, that's one thing that I haven't really got as much of. So what I'm going to do is use the same die and I'm going to cut into a sheet of adhesive foam. So this is in black as well, that's going to help with that contrast because it's going to naturally provide a drop shadow. So my focal point is going to go onto my textured background and it's going to go right in the middle. So I'm being careful because of course I've got everything sticky here. Just place this down gently and the great thing is with this adhesive that you can usually move it around a little as long as you've not pressed it down really hard for a few moments. There we go, so I'm happy with that positioning. I love the pop of colour against the brown craft there, the neutral colour. I love the dimension in the background, it's just subtle, there's just a little bit. I've got some wet glue there in places but that will dry, we won't see that. Now for this one, for frame and balance, that's two things that I would consider but I don't think I need it here. Balance I don't need because everything's going central to this, so everything's going in the middle so it's all balanced anyway naturally. I don't feel like I need a frame because as with the first card I've already naturally created this frame by bringing my mat in a few millimetres from the edge. If I wanted to add a frame though on this one, my option would be to take a white gel pen and draw some faux stitching. That would kind of be my choice, I think, for this design. Okay, so we've worked through the first four steps for each of these. We've been considering our A, B, C, D as we've been going through as well. The last step, the fifth step, is kind of an all-rounder. It's finishing touches and that includes your sentiment, any accents and additional embellishments you want and then you want to do a double check of your A, B, C, D. So let's start with this card and we of course need a sentiment. Now I'm going to add my contrast in here, a real pop of contrast by using a black sentiment here. So absolutely beautiful. And I can now decide where am I going to put this? I could put it down the bottom, that would help with the balance, but I feel like for my focal point, I want to kind of have this over the top. Now I'm going to add additional dimension here as well because I'm not going to be posting this card, I'm going to be hand delivering it. So I can glue the two ends down and have a little bit of a curve. Now if I just hold these and 
lift that up you can see the curve that I've got there so I can still have my butterfly lifted wings off ever so slightly a little bit of dimension so I have balance I have contrast I have dimension and this is just my additional finishing touches so I'm going to do that I'm going to use a strong glue my choice for this is the craft stash book binding glue or creative craft products book binding glue from craft stash um, because this will hold extremely quickly now the lift that I've got the curve that I've got across this sentiment strip which is from my textures sentiments for all pack it's not a huge curve in fact I've just lifted that up a bit far I'm going to lay that down there so it's on the edge of my panel just really reiterating the frame just in from the edges there making sure it's straight as well and pressing those edges down now it's not a huge curve but it's just enough to add that balance. Now to finish this card off completely, I'm going to continue with my contrast of black and I'm going to use some small enamel dots here just to look kind of like splats around the sentiment here, around the butterfly as well. I think that will be enough to look as if there's a little bit of splattering going on and there is in my mind a perfect card that's got everything we need we have the focal point we've chosen the colors including contrast we've got background texture we've got a natural frame here we've got balance and we've got all our X accents and such and then we've got balance I've spoken about contrast I've spoken about and we've got dimension with that little bit of lift but you can include texture in the background as your dimension now let's check with the second card and finish this one off now for this one my sentiment is going to be two of the large um, letters these are again on foam and these are from my monoprint collection they're the decorative letters they're nice big and bold and I have cut these from a white or it's more of an ivory cardstock and I've also cut them from the adhesive foam again now I'm placing these down extremely lightly because I need to get them central before I press them down for good and as I said with this foam you do get the option of lifting them a little just checking I'm happy that that's central and straight and then I can pop those down there perfect so I've got lots of dimension there now now to add a little bit of accent to this I'm not going to go with the black enamel dots for this one I'm actually going to go with the white and I'm choosing distressed spray stain in picket fence and I'm just going to splatter some white this then ties in the white sentiment into the background it kind of anchors everything down so giving this a really good shake and I'm just going to flick the white now I will have areas that will be have bigger splats and smaller splats and I like that that is completely unpredictable I can just clean up my desk there and allow that all to dry so as an overview on this card we've got our five points we have our focal point leaving two-thirds of the card free for other embellishment I've chosen my colors which if you go and have take a look at my color combinations playlist you'll get lots of ideas for color combinations there and I will make sure I link that at the end for you I've got background texture here I've got that natural frame and I've got balance by clustering everything in the center and then lastly I've got my sentiment and my accents embellishments now let's just check we have got balance as I've spoken about we have got contrast with the black we've got the bright color against the craft and we've also got the foam which is giving us dimension so there's two very different cards but as you saw I've actually created them using the same method the same five points and checking the same three elements as we've worked through if you enjoy instructional videos like this please make sure you subscribe to my channel I've got lots more lined up and in store for you coming very soon so take care everybody and I hope to see you again very soon